Mr. Chairman, my delegation and I bring to all of you sincere greetings from the Ferry States of Micronesia. We're honored to be here at the 34th FAO Regional Conference for Asia and the Pacific, and we commend the government of Fiji for hosting this auspicious regional gathering. I'm pleased to join the previous speakers, Mr. Chairman, in congratulating you on being elected as our, um, to the new post as our uh, chairman for the next year or so. And in, in saying that, we also bid goodbye and, and, and uh, uh, express our appreciation to the outgoing chairman for his excellent leadership. May I also extend my respect and gratitude to FAO Director General and FAO colleagues for their commitment to assist us as member states to defeat hunger globally, regionally, and domestically. Mr. Chairman, my country, the Ferry State of Micronesia, is a small island country, as you know, made up of over 600 uh, tiny islands scattered across the North Pacific uh, with a population of slightly uh, over 100,000 as based on the 2010, 2010 population census. Home to our ancestors, These Sea of Islands have sustained generations of Micronesians for past decades, if not millenniums. We who now remain as guardians continue to depend on the lands and surrounding seas as a source of life as is. And this is especially noted from our last uh, household income expenditure survey, where it was noted that 79% of the households generate income from subsistence consumption, which accounts for about 13% of the total households income throughout the country. Of this, agriculture production, including um, such things as crops, fruits, vegetables, accounts for about 64%, followed by fisheries at 27%. In 2015, FSM along uh, fellow UN member states committed to embarking in the new challenges, uh, in the new challenge in forging the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And the Pacific leaders further reaffirmed through its uh, Asia Pacific and Small Island Developing States affiliations and in cooperation with UN partners the FSM has localized this commitment by translating these 17 SDGs into its national and sub-regional uh, context. Climate change is, without question, the gravest threat to my people's welfare, livelihoods, and general security. It is the survival issue of our time, Mr. Chairman. Our sustainable development is threatened by the harmful effects of excessive greenhouse gas emission into the atmosphere, effects which uh, poison our root crops, destroy our reef systems, and drive many of our people from their ancestral homes. All of us, developed and developing countries, have a stake in finding ways that minimize man-made damage to Mother Earth. FSM joins its fellow Pacific Island Forum members in pledging to the Majuro Declaration for Climate Leadership by strengthening our country's effort to fight climate change. With limited resources, the FSM has undertaken some bold initiatives against climate change. First, we operate under a national, na nationwide integrated disaster risk management and climate change policy that mainstreams climate change into our primary governmental and economic decision-making processes. 
This policy places special emphasis on strengthening the application of traditional knowledge of ancient conservation practices which are threatened by sea level rise, ocean acidification, and other effects of excessive global greenhouse gas emissions. Second, Mr. Chairman, we have taken significant steps in conserving our limited land and fragile marine ecosystems through the Micronesian Challenge. We have undertaken this challenge because our nation is made of many small low-laying atolls. Our people have been wise stewards of our land and sea, working with the environment to provide sustenance for all of us. As the preamble to our Constitution says, and I quote, the seas bring us together, they do not separate us, our island sustains us, our island nation enlarges us and makes us stronger. Our ancestors who made their homes on these islands displace no other people. We who remain with no other home than this, unquote. FSM places a high priority on the harsening of advanced information and communication technologies for our socioeconomic development, especially in the areas of distance education, health, and natural disaster early warning system. Sustainable development must be supported by all of its pillars, not just economic and environmental concerns, but also social considerations. Our people are our most valuable assets, and so therefore we are tailoring an approach that is inclusive of our people with special attention to the circumstances of our women, youth, elderly, and the disabled. Their advancement must be mainstreamed into our dialogue and commitment in the SDGs. Mr. Chairman, the impacts of sea level rise as a result of climate change have given rise to the need to preserve and protect our established maritime boundaries. It is not only an issue of maintaining our sovereign rights in the exclusive economic zone, but also our sovereignty in our territorial jurisdiction. Pacific Island countries like FSM have invested significant resources to finally conclude our maritime boundaries with neighbors so as to promote peace, harmony, and cooperation among our Pacific family of ocean states. But this is threatened by sea level rise. For some of us, it is also an existential matter. Let us not lose sight, Mr. Chairman, of the enormous importance of the world's oceans and wish to highlight the SDG 14, placing emphasis on healthy, productive, and resilient oceans so we can share the benefits from our regional and national arrangement in fisheries to achieve this global goal. Let me stress, Mr. Chairman, the central role that the effective management of all fisheries must play in sustainable development. Bycatch and particularly discarded bycatch, they're, they're in effect, uh, threaten effective fisheries management. This is a serious conservation problem because of valuable living resources are, are wasted. Moreover, it threatens our food security and nutrition needs. Mr. Chairman, non-communicable diseases continue to be a challenge and so the FSM has declared this as a health crisis. It is not controlled. If it is not controlled, it can undermine sustainable development and degrade the quality of life of our people. We are appreciative of the Global Action Program on Food Security and Nutrition in Small Island Developing States, which is supporting the implementation of the Samoa Pathway an outcome of the third International Seeds Conference in 2014. In conclusion, Mr. Chairman, we recognize the central role that the reliable data plays in governmental planning and in crucial need for capacity building. Achieving these goals is a challenge and an expensive one due to accessing and serving over uh, 60 uh, 
islands in a vast area of the Pacific Ocean. We are grateful for the specialized UN agencies, regional organizations, and bilateral partners for their assistance in rolling out our 216 integrated agriculture census to overcome this uh, evidence-based setting exercise and further note the Pacific Strategic Plan for Agriculture and Fishery Statistics for Guidance. With that, Mr. Chairman, I thank you very much.